<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Hi, Tina. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Damn technology. <laughs> My God. All right. So I don't know what happened. Can you hear me, uh, Desiree? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes, I can hear you clearly. All right, okay, folks. So, uh, really, really sorry again. We did prepare, but I don't know what happened to the browser. The browser froze, and for some reason, anytime when you, if you use Ninja Webinar, if the browser froze, or if you go back, it basically closes the whole webinar completely. Okay, which is really um, weird. Anyway, so let's start with this. Uh, my name is Yusuf Chowdhury. For those who don't know me, um, I own a company called Online. Uh, business owners this uh, digital marketing firm so we basically provide services in the areas of um you know web development graphic social media strategies and management and seo and google adword and facebook AdWords and all this junk right and we also coach and train other businesses so the purpose of the webinar today is for two reasons one as usual to provide amazing value so y'all can benefit from it and the secondly hopefully to earn your business okay so i'm gonna go ahead and let one of my awesome um, Ninja uh, team member, uh, Desiree Martinez. She's in charge of the social media team. She'll go ahead and talk to you about some of the, you know, tips and strategies and how to get or how to create a raving fan for your business through the social media side. So, Desiree, please go ahead, take the floor. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Um, you saw, can you turn off? Okay, there you go. <laughs> I'm just in the other blank so that we can get everybody that was there over here. Okay. All right, let's do this. So I'm going to share my screen and all of the awesome things that we have ahead for you guys is going to be happening now. Um, if you have any questions, if you can do me a favor, just wait till the end. And I only ask that because I'm going to go full screen here and I'm not going to be able to see the browser. So, so welcome to building a community of targeted raving fans. Uh, I'm very excited to be here today. It's very nice to be out of my bed. I actually had foot surgery yesterday. Super minor, not a big deal, but uh, it's nice to not have to be laying down with my foot up in the air. Uh, so um, let's just dive right into what we're going to talk about today. And um, I'll get stuff. tell you a little bit about me. So I've been doing social media marketing for since 2010. I started off doing it by networking with people who had no idea what Facebook was. So in 2008, Facebook went public to the world. You weren't required to have a work email or a college email in order to access it anymore. And a lot of people were starting to get on board with it. And they kept asking me, Desiree, how do I use this Facebook thing to help my business grow? And one day someone suggested to me that I do this for a career. And I was like, no one's going to pay me to be on Facebook. That's so silly. But push comes to shove, there actually is a thing. So I did a bunch of freelance and I worked with a variety of companies. I was a social media producer for a news station in Phoenix. I have uh, won awards. I actually started Social Media Day Arizona um, back when I was living there. And then I got married to a man who joined the Air Force. And so Got some of Texas, which is how I met Yusuf, and uh, became one of the social media uh, managers for online business owners. So that's a little bit about me and my history. Um, on this screen, you're just going to see me and my husband, my two <laughs> little kids, and of course my my dog Kara. So, uh, so why are we here today? So we're here to learn about what sort of things you should be posting on social media unlocking Facebook groups and how they can really help your business and your brand with connecting with people in a different way, how to find and utilize influencers. I'm going to go over what an influencer is, how you can use it for your business, and so many other things and how they can be a powerful tool for your business. And then we're going to go briefly into Facebook ads so that you can kind of learn a little bit about the pay-to-play model that Facebook um, definitely has. 
So, but first, I want you to ask yourself something really important about your brand. What makes you unique? Now, when you actually join um, online business owners, we send you an intake form, and this is actually one of the questions that we do. We want to know about your business and what makes you stand out, why you're different. And this is important because only 1% of people that follow big brands on social media actually engage with them. <clears throat> now, that doesn't mean that they don't see them. It doesn't mean that they don't like their post or click on those links, but they actually engage with them. Like They comment, they interact. They're really excited to share what they think about those brands. And it's really important to know before you like jump off the social media cliff that if these big brands are having this struggle, it's okay that you're having them too. But we want to make sure that you're doing what they're not, which is having other places where you can grow your community and really help you identify where you should be investing your time and money. And then, of course, just being present and available to your followers in a way that a lot of big brands aren't. I know that this sounds daunting and like a lot of work ahead of you, but as you know, we're not in this for what's easy. We're in this to do what's best for biz our businesses so that they can grow. So it's always important to remember that quality over quantity. So even if you only have a thousand people that like your Facebook page or your Twitter or your Instagram, it's really important to make sure that you know that just because you only you think that it's oh I only have a thousand people, but if those thousand people are actually engaging with your content and following you and paying attention to what you have to say, that is one hundred percent better than having ten thousand or a hundred thousand people that like your page just to have less and less people paying attention to what you have to say and engaging with you. So in order to get those people engaging with you, we need to talk about what you should be posting to social media. So my biggest thing is, is you can be an expert and make your own content or you can keep using everyone else's and give them your their leads. Now, when you work with OBO, we're going to be helping you have a full marketing strategy available for your business. We're not just going to be making you a website and say, bye, good luck. We're going to make sure that you're set up for success with searching your app. Uh, search engine marketing. Uh, we're going to make sure that if you have, you know, pop-ups, email marketing, all those things that might be available for you, we're going to work with you on that. And your social media is part of that. But if your business is doing that, it's pretty good that it's pretty likely that your competitors are also doing that as well. So if we're sharing information or you're sharing information from other sources that's relevant to your brand, you could be giving all of that the, that lead all of those that data to your competitors. So it's really important for you to be making your own content. Now, what do I mean by making your own content? I believe in sharing a big variety of kinds of content. Facts are always really helpful. Um, things that are easy to share but enticing, like social media plus email marketing goes maximum results, and your message is talking about that a little bit. You know, asking questions making statements and questions, being encouraging, all that stuff is going to be really valuable information related to your brand. Gives it a good variety. And if you're making your own graphics, which you should be, or our team OBO can do that for you as a part of our social media service, you're going to be really ahead of the game here. I also really encourage you to go beyond your brand and, um, post sort of behind the scenes stuff of what you have going on. I always, me and my family are a big part of my personal brand, so I'm always sharing fun things like games me and my husband like to play, things, pictures of my kids, going on dates with my husband, books I'm reading. I've sort of adopted this way of doing my selfies with my books where it's like over the nose like this. Um, and then, of course, desk pictures. I always show my desk. My desk is always a mess. It's always covered in something new and fun. So I really encourage you to show behind the brand to really make you relatable to people and really connect them on a personal level. That's what people want to see. We know how the, the saying, people do business with those they know, like, and trust. And even from a branding place, it still reigns true. So you can post the same thing to all of your plat platforms, but it's really important to respect the audience and the formatting of each platform. 
whatever you post on one side, uh, take the time to craft a message and size the images for each platform. So let's go over an example. So these are three examples of the same post. <laughs> the first one is done for Facebook. The second one's done for Instagram, and the third one is done for Pinterest. So each one is sized for the platform. And then, of course, the message, while it could be the same, which is everyone wants to be on the first page of Google, but it takes a little bit of time to do it. Here's how we can help you. And then we can do things like for Facebook with the click for the link. And in Instagram, we're going to add a caveat of something like click the link in our bio for more information and then include 11 to 30 hashtags at the bottom of the post. Or you're going to have Pinterest where you're just going to basically use this title, add some keywords to it, and then share, make sure your backlink to where you want them to go is in place. If you have more questions about this, you can shoot you stuff for myself an email to uh, explain that more in detail. But it's important to make sure that you're respecting the platform and knowing what the, how, and, and posting in the way the audience expects of you. So. And it's really important to be consistent. So this is one of my favorite tools. It's called the Content Calendar, and it's this beautiful pink book, but it, it allows for you to map out your content on a daily and weekly and monthly basis so you know what you should be posting, what your messages are. You can put, like, days that have themes and holidays and give yourself deadlines. You It also comes with these fun stickers so you can identify, oh, I need to post here about this, I need to post here about that. So really encourage you to get a calendar of some sort that works for you. I think that this content calendar is this content calendar is a fantastic resource. I really love using it. And then um, I really encourage you to find a way to fit live video into your marketing plan. We all know that video is like king right now, and it has been since last year. But as Facebook does more and more with it, as they've introduced, you know. Um, YouTube Live is not available if you have over 10,000 subscribers. Uh, they do uh, Instagram Live now, Snapchat with those 24-hour, 10-second uh, videos. So find a way to fit live video into your marketing plan. It's really going to be helpful, and we'll go over that a little bit going forward. So it's important to have a plan. What do you want to talk about? You always want to schedule it out, and by schedule it, use your content calendar to plan it, and then you want to promote it ahead of time. So. Oh, I'm going live in an hour to talk about this, and I have a graphic for it. And then you're able to do, like, oh, in 15 minutes, we're getting ready. You can share and promote that you're going live on Facebook on your other platforms as well. It's okay to use notes. In fact, I am going to insist that you do. Use notes when you're doing this or whatever you want to talk about. That way you don't forget anything, and you're not just staring at a camera going, um, well, oh, yeah, and this is what I wanted to say. And Oh, oh, I forgot about this. And, well, uh. It's really important to make sure that you you have a plan. Part of your plan includes notes of what you want to talk about. Don't script it, but make sure your talking points are easily accessible for you to reference. Then engage. People are going to be commenting, even just simple like, "Hey Mary, hey Joe, thanks for joining us." If someone asks you a question, ask that question and answer it if you can. Or if you're not, at, if you want to make your statement first and then answer questions later, make sure to state that in your at the beginning of your Facebook Live. Um, some housekeeping stuff for your Facebook Live. You know, make sure you have a dedicated background that isn't busy. So I live in a house of toddlers. It would not be a good idea for me to do a professional Facebook Live where I'm talking about the power of social media with a messy kitchen and a floor covered in laundry and toys everywhere, which is the current state of my living room, it's not going to be a good idea. So make sure that you have a good background. And then also make sure that you have good lighting. Lighting is really important. Um, you can buy lighting. You can just use a window. You know, time your Facebook Lives or whatever do you, your videos you're planning to do when you have the best lighting in your house or the room that you're going to be using. And then make sure it's quiet. You know, if it doesn't, again, doesn't make sense for me to be trying to record a video while my kids are downstairs screaming and playing and having fun or crying and hurting each other because you don't want that in the background that's going to ruin it. So maybe make sure it's during a quiet time, maybe after your kids go to sleep when no one's in the office and you don't have people around. That way it's quiet and the video, the full attention is on you. 
and not your busy background that's darkly lit and loud. <laughs> and then let's talk about Facebook versus portrait. Currently, the only platform that you can do a landscape view is with an iPhone. So that means you can have your phone in the wide format for doing video for Facebook Live. Or you can do portrait style. And then portrait style allows for it to isolate on, on you and then you're able to do it. Um, I have an Android and I currently do my Facebook Live that way as well. So, um, and then this is also super, super important. Make sure you're taking your Facebook Lives and you're repurposing them into content for YouTube. YouTube's going to be huge for search engine optimization. And especially if what you're talking about is evergreen, which means that it kind of can live on the internet forever for long periods of time because the information is relevant. It's going to be super, super helpful for you and what you have going on. So I really encourage you to do that. Um, there are, a, there's a video hack where you can just search how to convert Facebook by videos and you just download them and then you can upload them to YouTube. So that's kind of the, all about what I have for what you should be posting on Facebook. So now we're gonna dive into Facebook groups. I really love Facebook groups. You know, the average person spends 20% of their online time networking across social channels. It's really important to make sure that your message is being shared, but that you kind of have to think of like your Facebook business page is kind of this one way conversation has potential for two. And it's you talking directly at your, your potential client or your follower or something like that. Versus a Facebook group is going to be a place where you're able to build relationships, be more in candid, post more regularly, and then the other people in that group can share and ask questions and, as well and be a part of it. And it's allowing you to have a place to network, and it's focused and targeted. So why do you want to have a Facebook group? It's a, it's a specific community or tribe of people around a certain topic or business or brand. So for you, so for OVO, maybe we want to do an online business owner's client's Facebook page where people can ask questions and we can share information and what's going on to help educate our followers. I actually just started a Facebook group for a book club. And every month we read a book and talk about it throughout the month and kind of hold each other accountable to make sure we're reading. So there's a focused content and message around it. Does it make sense for us to do an online business owner's Facebook group and start talking about, you know, the latest in stock market sales in Asia. Like, make sure your content is relevant to your Facebook group that you're doing. The message is on point. Um, it allows for really great accountability, like I had said, whether it's trying to meet goals as a group or accomplish things, gives you a safe place to talk. Um, and then, of course, sharing information, sharing relevant news fun facts, asking questions, all that kind of stuff. So it's really a great place for you to share content about your business and what you have going on and then how you can help businesses. One of the other reasons I really like Facebook groups is you get notifications. So if you want your face, if you want someone to see every single thing you post on Facebook, they have to go in, they have to hit follow and they have to hit see first. And then it shows up at the top of their feed. But with notifications with Facebook groups, it by default, you're gonna get that little red notification tack trigger thing on notifications button on Facebook automatically unless someone turns that off. So it's a great way for you to make sure that every single one of your posts that you post are seen. You can add files. <coughs> so maybe um, we have you have something that people ask about all the time. So I'm a military spouse, and so there are Facebook groups I follow, and they have the same information that gets shared all the time. So there's files for it, like new to the base. Here's what you need to know. Oh, you want to figure out how space A travel works? Here's how space. Here's a file on how space A travel works. Oh, you're trying to figure out, um, you know, what the regs are for uniforms. There's a file in there about that kind of stuff. So having a place where you can keep all those files and share with people in one place is really helpful. And then it's an extension of your Facebook page. So if you post something on your business page, I encourage you to share it directly from the business page to the Facebook group so that it, incur it, it, it increases engagement and views for your Facebook page and then of course uh, your followers will get to see what you're doing you're not doing that double work that double share 
Some good housekeeping for Facebook groups is going to be, um, let's just start with like the different settings of Facebook groups. So private versus closed versus public. Private means that no one can search it in Facebook and find it. And people have to be added to it in order to have access to it. And then if someone wants to add somebody else, the admin of that page has to approve it. Closed means you can search for group, the name of the group in Facebook, but you have to request to join and admin has to approve you. And then public is just, you can search it and you can just join without any problems or filter system. Make sure your name is relevant. If you're trying to do, you know, build a Facebook group, you know, that's best tacos in San Antonio, then you probably should make your, fa your name your Facebook group Tacos of San Antonio, not weird spellings of taco or nami nami food and it so that it's harder to find so make sure your name is as relevant and simple as possible add people okay so here's the deal we all know someone in network marketing on our facebook page and they've all added us to a facebook group without our permission don't do this makes people angry and frustrated if you are starting a page ask people if they want to be a part of it so i when i started my book club group i asked people i posted about it and then i asked people hey you've been talking about reading books would you like to join my book club oh yeah add me to the group and i do so important to make sure you're getting that permission it's just it's just common etiquette you don't want to leave a bad taste in people's mouth over your business and what's great is you can actually post multiple times a day Unlike Facebook pages where you can get penalized in the algorithm or you can annoy people when you're posting multiple times a day, you can post a lot in a Facebook group because that's what people are essentially signing up for. And not only you get to post a lot, but other people can post a lot. So it's really important to make sure that you knowing that you can do that and it's okay. And then it's about, remember, it's about their needs. The people you're adding to this group have a need and it's your job to fill it. It's your job to be that answer. It's your job to be that resource for them. So make sure that you're remembering that when you're ever you're doing posts and talking with people in the group. Um, what to post? It's a lot of the same things that you can post with your normal page. Ask questions. Um, ask for people to share. Um, share things directly from your Facebook page. I am all for memes, inspirational life posts. Those are always great for engagement. I also really like picture of the day. So one of my friends does a Beachbody Facebook group and she starts, she does these every week challenges. Like she's like a month challenge and then every week has a POTD, which is a picture of the day. And it, it's kind of like, it gives people the parameters of what to post each day. So on Monday, she encourage, she has everybody post the page like a motivational or funny meme. And then let's see your smile or go to Shakeology or your go-to Shakeology or smoothie recipe. So all of these things that are dedicated to engagement and if people, rather than people just being a part of the group and doing anything, this gets them participating and off their feet and engaging. Another one is the, is a women's networking group I'm a part of. She does the same thing where it's a share of the day. And then she posts and then people comment on her post of what that is. So pictures of the day are really great ways to get that engagement for your, for your group. You can grow your Facebook group by doing a webinar or an event. Talk about how you have a Facebook group off and, um, get, and encourage people to join. You can promote it on social media. Um, you can add your clients to it with their permission. Uh, let your members add people as well. And then, of course, you can add this as a sales funnel piece. Like, hey, you know, if you sign up for my service or whatever, you're going to get, we can add you to this group where you can be a part of our community of pickle lovers or whatever it may be. And everyone's talking about pickles and their favorite flavors and fun pickle swag. Like, you know, whatever is a part of your funnel and the message of the group works together, that's how you can add people. So, on to influencers. So influencer marketing is also, is so big and so important and so controversial. So we're gonna go over how to find and utilize influencers. It's simple, it's practical, and it's basically engagement gold. It is somebody else talking about your brand for you. I mean, you can't really get much simpler than that. 95% of people trust recommendations from others over branded content, even if they don't know them. 
How many of you have gone to Yelp to look up a new place to eat and you're taking the recommendations of people you've never met to determine if it's any good? Same with Google reviews, all that kind of stuff. Or if you go to the Facebook page and they have reviews, you read through them and you see what are people are saying about their brand, looking at their pictures, all this stuff. You are trusting the recommendations of people over the brand. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Didn't realize my phone was on. Um, so with getting started with influencers, it's really important to look at your current customers. And you can turn to, so like for online business owners, if we have somebody that is a new client or an old client that we've had for a while and we've done work for them and they really like what we did, we can turn to them and say, hey, would you be willing to talk about our business with your followers and tell them what you think about the service and how it helped your business? That person is instantly an influencer by doing that. And... um. It was easy. It was someone that was already there. It's essentially asking people who do your business for a review. So it's important to look to your current customer network and see what they can do for you to get started. And then make a list of those people and connect with them. And then another thing that you can do is just research, 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 re research people that might, that are in your, that you don't, you don't know and see if they would be a good fit for your brand. So you wanna find them and get to know them. You don't just say, oh, this person has 10,000 followers on Instagram, I'm gonna connect with them and see if he's interested in talking about my, you know, cockroach flour, but, cause they're a baker, but they're a baker that doesn't do anything with healthy food, like they're all about the sugar flour life. Doesn't make sense for that. So it's really important to make sure that you connect with them and, that it's a good fit for their brand. And then give them freedom. So if you're giving, so a lot of time with influencers, what you're gonna be doing is connecting with them and giving them a free product or a free service in order to see what your business is like. And they're gonna play with it and, and put it through the ringer and just see what it was like. It's important for you to give them the freedom to do that and post their most honest, opinion about it and don't ask for too much sometimes people will go to influencers and be like well i want you to do this i'm going to give you this amount of money and this product but i need you to do this and this and i expect 20 photos and i expect you to do at least 15 posts on social media and i want you to lead a twitter chat about my business don't do that don't ask too much them Work within their parameters. A lot of people who do influencer marketing as a business will already have their parameters in place. But if you're looking to work with somebody just because they have a good reach and love your product, just let them talk about that. Let them <clears throat> love your brand the way that's true to them and their audience. And then once they do stuff, share it on your business pages. Um, so you're going to share it on your Facebook group. You're going to share it on your business page and your Twitter feed, all that stuff. You want to share what people are saying about your brand on your sites so that you're like, see, look, that guy over there likes what we're doing too. So again, research, research, research. Find people that are the right fit. Be their fan because they're your fan. That's the first thing to do. And then make sure it's a good fit for your business. And then so you might have to pay people. You have to keep in mind, a lot of people that do this for a business, they spend a lot of time, a lot of work. It's their job to be an influencer. They grow their following to thousands, hundreds, thousands, a million people. And that costs money to tap into that. You wouldn't expect not to pay money for a bus ad or a billboard. And that's totally based on eyeballs. This is the same thing. So you might have to pay and or give product to them in return. And know that you're going to have, they're going to have to tell people that it's a paid post, it's a promoted post, um, because of the FCC compliance. The FCC requires that people say, hey, I was paid for this, but this is my opinion, or this is an advertisement, or this is a media event. They have to cover themselves because they can get sued for that. And then remember, it's their network, their audience. It's your, they're giving you the privilege to be a part of. Maintain that relationship. Let them do their thing with your brand. And I think you'd be surprised about the wonderful things that can happen from it. And then our last section is about Facebook advertising. 
So a Facebook ads is kind of a taboo sort of subject because a lot of people don't want to pay to use Facebook. And it's really a hard thing for people to get past. But I want you to know this. Only 10% of business pages pay for Facebook advertising. There's 40 million business pages. So that means only 4 million business pages are paying for all of the awesomeness that is Facebook. So your business should be there too so that you are seen in a sea of 1.2 billion posts that people are doing on a regular basis. It's important for you to familiarize yourself with social media targeting tools to build your perfect target for your business. I really encourage you to sit down and really think about your perfect client. How old are they? Where do they live? How much money do they make? Do they have a car? Do they own a house? Do they rent a house? Do they live in an apartment? Do they have a dog? Do they have a cat? Do they love tacos? Do they, are they health nuts? Do they go get massages and facials on the regular? What brands do they like? What sports do they like? Do they even like sports? What movies do they like? Really paint that picture of what your perfect client looks like and write that down. And that's really going to help you identify the perfect target for your business. And you want to do this because Facebook is gonna is already using that information. They've already helped other ads and advertisers create the perfect snapshot for their brand. So they're advertising to them. So if you ever want to see how this works, you'll be in Facebook and in the upper right hand corner, you can hit the little arrow and see why of an ad because it'll say sponsored and it'll say, why am I seeing this? Oh, the reason I just so happen to be seeing this advertised in my promo is because I am a woman between the ages of 22 and 56 of this in the United States. Now, yes, that's a little vague. Facebook also will add in things like this information is based on your Facebook profile and where you've connected to the internet. So it's not, I'm not only am I a woman between these ages that lives in the United States, I am also based on the places I've gone online and the things I like and do on Facebook, they're targeting me because they think I'd be a good fit. So you want to take advantage of the power of this tool as well. You want to target people specifically. So it's important to know the different kinds of advertisements that are available to you so you can advertise correctly to people. Um, this is, I actually do need to update this slide because it is actually a little outdated. They have recently updated it. But you can boost your posts. Now it's called like engagement and connection. And so engagement is where you will pick boost your posts, like your page, reach people who are nearby your business. Um, you can send people to different websites um, to convert the to convert them for your sales. Like maybe you have a landing page for an opt-in, that sort of thing. So it's important to familiarize yourself, I'm sorry, with the different kinds of advertising options to reach your goals. And then you really want to build a very, very specific audience. If anything, you want to write this link down at the bottom of the page, facebook.com slash ads slash audience dash insights. You go to this page, you'll be able to use that snapshot that you built that I talked about in the previous slide to put together your audience. And it's gonna help you identify not only, it's gonna help you identify the traits of the person that you are creating, but you're gonna learn more about them. You're gonna learn how much money they're making, what sort of things they tend to like, activities that they do, where they live, all that kind of stuff. And to help you narrow it down so that you can target your app really specifically. If you wanna target men and women between the ages of 18 and 25 who go to, you know, the local college that drinks Starbucks, you can do that because that's the interest that you can put in. You can target them specifically. So really focus on building a good specific audience. So this is an example of one of the ones that we've done for online business owners. We've targeted men and women between the ages of 25 and 54 that live in the United States, and they have the following interests. These are people that are familiar with social media, they want to outsource stuff, they're familiar, we are perfect audience to someone who's familiar with these tools, but doesn't necessarily have the time to execute them and wants them maintained for them. So, so some housekeeping. It's important to test. You're gonna have to play with 
your audience to find the right opt-in for yourself. Um, and in order to do that, you're going to have to run multiple ads. You're going to want to run like three versions of the same kind of ad. One ad will have a message. You'll use the same message, but you'll change the picture three times. It'll be a picture, just a picture of someone happy and just a picture of someone upset and then a picture with text on it or a vector image, that kind of thing. So to find what your demographic responds to best, you're gonna have to test and see what they are clicking on more than others. Um, and then of course, images with text, there's a 20% rule. Facebook ads will let you run if your image has more than 20% text, but it won't perform as well. Facebook wants your images to have less than 20% text on them, even if it's just your logo or a stock photo of like growth or something like that. Like, so be aware of that when you're doing it. And then to sum up what we've been talking about, I have a couple of tools for you. So TAC, TAC is, um, their whole thing is, have you ever looked at it, uh, your social media calendar and it's totally blank and rather than staging photos and trying to force something to work, you can turn to TAC, find people that are talking about your business or service, get legal permission to use their images, and then you can share them on your social platforms and use them for your marketing. BeLive.tv is, is a Facebook Live tool that allows for you to use your desktop to do Facebook Lives. You also can use it for interviews. It adds like the fun scrolling news feeds. You can update it. It's a really fantastic tool. It's very efficient for like the um, news interview sort of uh, way of doing stuff. And then if you're diving into Facebook advertising, you definitely want to make sure that you have Facebook Pixel. Facebook Pixel can be added to your website. It's just a line of code that you embed on your site. If you just Google Facebook Pixel, it will walk you through what to do and how to do it. So um, remember that the team at OBO is here to help you. And if you are interested in taking advantage, we have a free 15 minute social media review. Just shoot Yusuf an email at yusufchowdhury at gmail.com and he will connect with you and we can do a social media review for your business page and give you some tips and pointers and things that you can do to maybe help it grow and do a little bit better or uh, next level. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Does anyone have any questions? I will gladly answer them now. I think I lost you, Soft. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> you say anything? I can't hear you if you're saying anything, Soft. Hey, there you are. Hi. All good. Okay, let me just put a note. <clears throat> Uh, technology. Okay. I guess I was just super informative. <laughs> so, like I said, guys, make sure you shoot you saw um, an email if you want to get that fifteen minute. Can you go over what Facebook Pixel was again? I want. Oh, uh, Letty, Facebook Pixel. If you actually, uh, my thing was it's a line of code that you add to your website so that whenever you're running ads and people are coming to your site from a Facebook ad, they're recording all of their information and their activity, and that way you can advertise to people better. So if you Google Facebook Pixel, it'll give you a better idea of how it works and then how you can set it up. No, Letty, it's it's for like anything with Facebook. So it's it's an advertising tool. So like if you're running an ad on Facebook and someone clicks it, whether it's on mobile or on desktop or even on a tablet, it's collecting the data of that user for you to use to advertise better. And then there's Usoft's email, so do you guys think of that 15-minute social media consultation 
snap and look at your page so you can see if there's anything you can do better. <laughs> well, thanks for listening to me ramble, guys. I hope that it was informative, and if you, I hope it inspired you to come up with some, some great ideas for your page. <laughs> All right, thank you, everyone. I'm not